Good evening and welcome in. This is the Philadelphia Soul official pregame show live here on Bob Long Sports. Bob Long, Eric Nash alongside. And Eric, a newcomer to the booth here. Welcome. I know Rob couldn't be with us today. Rob Stott, our normal uh, color commentator, if you will, here on the pregame show. But Eric, a avid follower of the Philadelphia Soul and a guy that watches a lot of games, does voo soccer with us here on BLS. And we're really happy to have you here live at the Wells Fargo Center. Thank you for having us here. Uh, it's great. It's great to be here. The Soul's a really exciting team. Potentially, you know, a team that could maybe make a run all the way through the, through the league without losing. You know, a very, very interesting team and an interesting transitional kind of year for the AFL as well. Without a doubt. You know? As you yeah. tease there, Eric, a five-team league down from eight last year, a league that the Soul won, uh, but they weren't even the number one seed. So when you talk about a team in the Soul with the talent to go undefeated, you know, you take a look at all the roster additions that they've made. Mike Helvention, he is the leading rusher among all qualified running backs with 81 yards. And there's a guy over in Cleveland, Arvell Nelson, who's the leading rusher in the league. He's a quarterback, but focusing on the running back, Eric, Mike Helvention came over from the Arizona Rattlers last year. And he's been a great stopgap guy and really has become a lot more than just stopgap. He's been a guy that has done some great things with the running game and the balance that Clint Dolzell head coach of the Philadelphia Soul that he wants is really really important and Mike Hell's a big part of that. Yeah Benson's a force for sure I mean yeah big guy they have him listed well I saw a 265 <laughs> and then 285 so I'm I'm thinking closer to 300 but okay. he's, he's a real force he's tough when you need a couple yards He's very tough to stop. Yeah, so very hard to arm tackle for sure. A, uh, a, the a few extra yeah. meals at uh, Chickie and Pete's, one of the key sponsors for the Soul, without a doubt, for Mike Cal Benson. As we continue to move through the starting lineup, Eric, it's the 2015 AFL MVP and the 2016 quarterback for the Soul that led them to the title, Dan Rodabaugh. 23 touchdowns to just three interceptions on the year. Third in the league in passing. And there's another guy that will take the field tonight, Shane Carden who's throwing for about seven more yards per game than Rodabaugh. So it could be an arid out type of game, but it's what people have come to expect from the soul as long as Rodabaugh has been in charge. Yeah, I mean, when you look at, when you look at Rodabaugh and you look at, you look at the uh, points for and against uh, for the soul, they're way on top of the league. They're probably like a plus 60 or something like that, bringing a little soccer talk into go. that, okay? But they're like a plus 60 where three of the five teams are under – are less less more points scored against them than for them right and uh, you know so that that's what makes me think when you look at that that he, this the soul are really by far you know the best team so far now they've also uh had their two toughest games against the two teams that aren't expansive teams this year that's right so that's you know that that that's very interesting but i'm assuming you know when you're talking a five-team league four other teams all the teams have played them they, they've dominated so far and you know like we were saying about you know possible uh, consecutive wins and whatnot and getting yep. through the season. You know, think about it. They don't have to go to the West Coast to play the San Jose's and the Arizona um, teams. You know, you don't have these trap games. And it looks to me, if you look at the schedule, given the uneven amount of teams in the league, it looks like every every other week you're off. Right. Am, I, am I seeing well, that? Well, no, that not every other week. But right. there are three bye weeks in the course of the 14-game schedule. And, Eric, you mentioned the legacy teams beside the Soul. The Tampa Bay Storms and the Cleveland Gladi Gladiators with the Gladiators that the Soul traveled to. Quicken Loans Arena, the Q as it were, which is hosting its fair share of big sporting events at this moment anyways as the Cavs sure. move through the playoffs in the NBA. But that was a two-point win where the Soul gave up a, uh, a season-high 67 points and won by two. And then you mentioned the Tampa Bay Storm, a team that last year was – in fact, quite putrid at times throughout the course of the year. That's true. I mean, very, yeah. very poor team relative to the other eight or the other seven teams at the time. Uh, but really, this Tampa Bay Storm team has started to turn it around. A big win last week by four points against the Brigade. They put up 62 points. And it was the first game against the Soul where the Soul escaped with a four-point win, 56-52 to 52 right. against Tampa Bay. So these legacy teams putting up a fight. Now Cleveland struggling at 1-4 overall, but we talked off air, Eric. This is a Cleveland team with a dynamic playmaker in Arvell Nelson who has played all but the one game this year at the quarterback position. Came in last year in the midst of, of a different team's season and came in and really gave a jump start in the second half of that season. So Nelson, the team's leading rusher, the league's leading rusher, 
uh, making Cleveland a difficult matchup. I think the record probably not uh, an appropriate uh, explanation for their season and their talent. Yeah, I mean that's that's a very deceiving record, and I, I would have to really really scrutinize it, you know, maybe yep. a little better. Um, to, to decide if it was just maybe, I mean, the bottom line is that they 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 have a, a bad record, but I don't expect it to stay that way. I think if you look at the lineup that they put out there, the Cleveland team, I, I'm thinking they're the second best team in the AFL okay. right now. Uh, I know Tampa has a better record, but I yep. I think Tampa may have beaten up on a couple of these expansion teams, you know, sure. to, to garner that record. I think they played Washington possibly twice already, mm -hmm. so that 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 could be the the reasoning behind it. But we, we will see. But, I mean, I think you want to have a competitive balance in the league to some to some sense. Wouldn't, sure. you, wouldn't you agree, Bob? I mean, you don't want to see, you know, 35-point victories by the Sol every week. I mean, maybe, you know, maybe some, some, some people do. I don't want to see that because mm -hmm. if there's not a competitive balance in a league, you know, where there's five teams, you, you, you want to have competition. You don't want right. everything to be a foregone conclusion. You know, come a couple of months from now, like who's the best team? Yep. I mean, it's nicer for the best team, and I certainly think that every guy on the soul would want to win it on the field and not necessarily just win it because they're so far ahead of everyone else. All you're doing in that type of situation is setting yourself up for a fall, right? Because one day a team's going to stand up against you, and you've got to have some preparation on how to handle the adversity, which the game last week against Cleveland. Kind of was, you know, sure. that, that when you think about it, that was probably a good game for the union to get, you know, the to soul. get their field. They're not just I their, do that too. The union, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> the soul. Well, well, the union of the soul, okay? There they, you go. They, uh, they are not, you know, they, you don't want them to, uh, to, to shy away from adversity. And they're not going to be able to beat every team by 35, 40 points a game. Yeah, now it was a 35-point right. victory in their home opener, which was two weekends ago. In this building, Eric, against this opponent, and sometimes when you have a five-team league like this, the eccentricities of the scheduling uh, come into play, and, and this, without a doubt, would qualify as that. Shane Carden struggled in that game. They fell behind 21-0, did the brigade, fought their way back in the second quarter, and that's something that Clint Dolzell really harbored on and made a point of, Eric, that this is a, uh, a Baltimore brigade team that can really rush the passer. And that was what gave the soul some issues when they made that run back. Now, like you said, it did end in a 35-point victory, 69-34. to 34, And they're looking to do the same type of thing here tonight. But I think that Shane Carden and the wide receiving core of Baltimore is going to provide a much tougher matchup. On the season, Julian Talley leads the team in yards, 296 receiving yards on the year on just 15 receptions. And then Reggie Gray, who, by the way, was on the San Jose Sabercats, who won the league in 2015, he was on that Sabercats team along with Darius Money Reynolds, who suits up for the Soul tonight. So lots of storylines and lots of guys that have seen each other, but those two, Tally Gray and then Paul Browning, who has just a shade under 230 yards on the season, can be a, a triple threat from and, the wide receiver position. And one of the big matchups is going to be uh, Tally being covered by your guy, best Soul defensive player, I think. Dwayne Hollis, yes. right? So that, that's a, certainly a matchup to look at. Um, what do you think of that one? Yeah, I, I think that's going to be a yeah. lot of fun to watch because Tally is a guy that can go get the ball, can certainly run things down. And Hollis, a little bit of a diminutive defensive back, but very good with his hands, has a tied for league lead three interceptions with former teammate Tracy Belton, who now joins the Washington Valor. But Hollis has been great all year long, and I think that's going to be a phenomenal matchup. A lot of ex-Soul players are, are on uh, the uh, Baltimore team, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a, that's an Baltimore interesting Baltimore as well, yes. Part, part of the thing. But the, you know, the other big matchup would be uh, the Soul, or one of the Soul star, star receivers was the big name receiver. Maybe something that's changing at Tad. But Ryan McDaniel right. is going up against the defensive back Humane Black, and I don't know. I, I could say Humane all day long. I just, <laughs> it's just a wonderful name, Humane Black. Oh man, he's going to be doing thing. this all game, folks. After the the show is the, done here, the Q, the Q man <laughs> has Ryan McDaniel. Um, yep. How about your thoughts about that? Yeah, matchup, I man? think yeah. Ryan McDaniel has kind of been a right place, right time type of guy. Really good route runner, great hands, and you'll hear. 
Clint Dolzell and Dan Rodabaugh say the same thing about him. I think that he has been put in a great position to succeed because of the attention that needs to be placed over the top on Darius Money Reynolds. He provides that long threat, and I think Ryan McDaniel has done a great job to get into the seam. Had, I believe, three or four touchdowns in that first game against the Brigade. Really talented wide receiver that Rodabaugh loves to have in the slot. But Clint definitely has the coffee pot percolating right now. Uh, this should be, I mean, what do you think here? You, you're, you're looking at another 35-point victory or something of that ilk? Yeah, I, I don't see that today. Right. You know, we're not in the business of making predictions here, but I think this is a Philadelphia Soul team that will come out and play hard. But it was a Baltimore team that, you know, hadn't been on the road much. In fact, I think that was their first road game. And, yeah, this, it, it, this is going to be a different brigade team with a little bit more experience that were just in this building two weeks ago and had some time to game plan for the top team in the AFL, when Philadelphia all, Soul. When all is said and done, Bob, I think you're going to be looking at a 5-0 and Philadelphia Soul team, okay. though. I, I, I don't, you know, 35 points is a lot to make up in one game. You can make all the adjustments that you like, mm -hmm. but, you know, if you look at that last game against Baltimore, what you would have saw that, you know, the, 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 the Soul got a very big lead very early. I mean, I think they yep. were up, you know, 35-14 or something of that nature. And it was, you know, the, the game was over at that point. I, the, the final score really didn't matter. And that may have something to do with uh, what Clint was saying about how they, they didn't do quite as well the second half. I mean, they may have taken a little bit off the accelerator at that point. We'll see. I don't know the, the mindset there. But that was a runaway. For, for, for a game in the AFL, that was, that was a really big yep. runaway, I think. Without if you look at final scores, 35 is a big spread. You know, that's a very big spread. You know what yep. I mean? This yeah. is the Philadelphia Soul official pregame show. It's live on BLS Video. Bob Long and first-time guest Eric Nash, who, once that microphone was turned on, has been doing great today. I, I stopped talking <laughs> about soccer, but thank you very there much. There you go, yeah. Well, the Union are playing tonight, too, so we'll give them a little shout-out. Absolutely. Out. And hope they, hope they can get it done. Is that a home game or away game? They are down at RFK Stadium tonight. <laughs> That place is still around. Still around. <laughs> that's, a, that's a that scary rat infested place. But <laughs> and if the weather's anything like it is here, we're lucky to be watching football inside instead yes, of watching soccer outside today. I'll yes. tell you that much. Yeah, and yeah. the Washington Valor, they luckily do not have to go play at RFK Stadium. They get to play at a, a little bit of a nicer venue at the Verizon Center. So uh, that's a little bit of a breakdown of the game, Eric. And again, we're live here at the Wells Fargo Center. You see behind us here. The many banners of the Sixers, the Flyers. And just last week, Eric, they put up, or two weeks ago, the Seoul Championship banner. They had a great speech from Ron Jaworski. And our pregame show from that game is also live. It's available on BobLongSports.com. So give that a shout because Ron Jaworski was, was fired up. He was passionate. He was just coming from the parkway where the draft was being held at that same time. So it was Ron and rare, or maybe not so rare for him. And, uh, and it was a beautiful ceremony here at the center. I mean, you know, Ron Jaworski is such a wonderful advocate, owner, man that does everything for this particular league. He's just great. I mean, he just loves it. He, he lives and dies every play mm -hmm. with his family, uh, maybe his grandchildren at this point. But, you know, he's terrific. And it's funny, they had a trivia question on the board when we came in. And they said, what owner of the Philadelphia Soul was a member of the Pol is an active member of the Polish American String Band? You know Ron the No, it is not. It's Pichiraki. Oh, okay. So they got you there. So you know you go. Well, something you, you learn really something every day. But uh, yeah, but yeah, but right, yeah, but uh, I'm sure everybody in their seat guests Ron Jaworski, and Ron Jaworski is, is so busy with all his, his ventures. I don't know if he could be in a string band. Yeah. Not that Pichiraki's not very busy. Also, <laughs> now that I think about it, but good for him. Good for Pete and good, uh, good, good representation uh, for Philadelphia in the string band. Without a doubt. Thank you for that factoid there, Eric. We're going to take our break. We're going to come back on the other side. This is the Philadelphia Soul official pregame show. It's live here on BLS, and it's Bob Long and Eric Nash kicking it with you here this evening. Stay tuned. We'll be back on the other side discussing the league's many, many changes as we move into the 2017 campaign. Bob Long from Bob Long Sports here, and I want to urge all our listeners to visit our friends at Dunphy Ford in the Northeast. Dunphy Ford has all the latest Ford models, trucks, SUVs, and sedans. They also have a wide selection of used cars, trucks, and SUVs as well. Owned by a LaSalle graduate and a proud sponsor of Explorers Basketball, 
Dunphy Ford should be your first stop to buy or lease a new car. Visit them at 7700 Frankfurt Avenue in the Northeast or at DunphyFord.com. Check out the team of attorneys at Howland Hess O'Connell for all your estate planning needs. Located at 2444 Huntington Pike in Huntington Valley, Howland Hess O'Connell specializes in the drafting of wills, powers of attorney, and living wills. Partner Michael Cassidy, a LaSalle High School graduate and father of Michael Cassidy, Jr., class of 2009, is a proud alumnus and former quarterback for your LaSalle Explorers. Call today at 215-287. 9292 or CUP Wawa. Lmark Signs and Graphics, your choice for custom signs and design, has been servicing the Philadelphia area for over 30 years. From illuminated signs to vehicle wraps, Lmark Signs is your choice for all your custom signs needs. Lmark delivers high quality signs with a courteous, helpful, and experienced staff. Visit them at lmarksigns.com or give them a call at 610-692-0525. Again, that's lmarksigns.com, 610-692-0525. Go check out their website for some great examples of signs that Lmark has created and be sure to tell them that Bob Long Sports sent you. lmarksigns.com, your choice for custom signs and design. Hi, this is Rob Stott with Bob Long Sports. BLS is the official host of the pregame show for the Philadelphia Soul. Be sure to tune in before every home game for featured interviews with head coach Clint Dolzell and quarterback Dan Radabaugh, as well as player profiles. We even get the opportunity to speak with AFL Commissioner Scott Butera. Commissioner of the Arena Football League, Scott Butera on the line. You do a tremendous job. I, I, you know, of all the you know, local broadcast teams, you know, by far, Philadelphia is the gold standard in our league. You know, I wish they all could be like that because you really understand our game, you promote it well. And so be sure to tune in 30 minutes before every home game and check at Bob Long Sports on Twitter for programming. This is Bob Long here, and you certainly know me from BLS doing LaSalle College High School broadcasts, our weekly radio shows, and everything in between. However, during the 9 to 5, I am a commercial banker in the greater Philadelphia area. If your business is looking for financing or any other type of assistance, you can reach me at 215-328-2578. That's 215-328-2578. I've had experience in the energy industry, healthcare, public finance, as well as in manufacturing and leasing. Bob Long, a commercial banker in the greater Philadelphia market, helping your businesses grow. Bob Long from Bob Long Sports here, and I want to tell you about the good folks over at City Year Philadelphia. Every day, the dedicated young adults at City Year make an impact in high-need schools in Philadelphia and in 26 other cities across the country by serving students who need extra help to stay on track to graduate. If you are ages 17 to 24 and are interested in serving as a tutor, role model, or mentor, check out the inspiring stories at hashtag MakeBetterHappen. City Year is currently accepting applicants for the next school year. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is the Philadelphia Soul official pregame show live here on BLS with Bob Long and Eric Nash. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here tonight. It's been fun so far, and I know that there's a lot of people in this building, Eric, re really looking forward to this game. It's going to be a, an exciting one between two teams, like we mentioned, that faced off just two weeks ago. And, uh, and I know that the product that the league puts on is a very important part of the league's sustainability. And obviously that's not a rocket science type statement, but this league has been trying for a long time to work its way into the psyche of the American public and has done a, a nice job. Uh, you know, last year there was an 18 league and they definitely increased their television, regional and national presence. Now this year, another contract, that contract with CBS Sports continues as well as ESPN and then the local radio feed, which is right in the booth next to us here, 97.5 The Fanatic, locally in Philadelphia. So, you know, those are very important parts of the league. But, Eric, I want to get your thoughts on the league contraction from eight 
to five teams. And we've talked to Scott Butera for many, many, uh, many, many months now, going on back to when we started doing this last year. And, and he said that the most important thing is to bring in owners that are fully committed, financially active, and are willing to put in the investment that really is needed. So what you saw is five teams shed off the LA Kiss, the Portland Steel, Jacksonville Sharks, the Orlando Predators. Those teams all folded. And then the Arizona Rattlers, who were in Arena Bowl last year, because they were the only team, presumably because they were the only team within about 2,000 miles of, uh, of the rest of the league, they joined a Midwestern League. So now, three teams left, Washington and Baltimore, both owned by Ted Leonsis, come into the league and make it a five-team league. Scott Butera would come on and tell us we have the owners now that we feel are the base ready to build this league from the ground up. If you ever watched the uh, reality show, the LA Kiss was owned by the, 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 the two guys, Gene Simmons yep. and Paul Stanley, I believe, from Kiss. That's right. And they were a mess. I mean, that team was a mess. It was to run horribly. And what I'm saying is that when you talk about the raw number of amount of teams, yeah, that sounds important initially, but you want to have good core teams, not just teams that are there. Now, this situation with the two expansion teams being within, what, about 40 miles of each other? Sure. <laughs> same owner. And the same owner. That, that's an odd thing. Uh, I can't recall that ever being the case in a professional sport where, where the same guy owned both teams. Can you? I cannot. No. But, I mean, that's an interesting thing for what, you know, if, if the new owner is, is a good owner and the... And he the, is, the, by the way. Capitals, as well as the Wizards and the WNBA team from Washington, D.C. So he's very active. So he's invested and he's invested, which is good, okay? Because, you know, putting the money in and being an absentee owner is not going to help you much, okay? Right. But this guy, he's got two teams in basically fairly much the same market. That's an interesting dynamic right there. Right. And remember the, the NHL listed for 50-plus years, the National Hockey League, with only six teams. Never expanding, never contracting till 1967. Right, and and you know what? What that created were wonderful rivalries: the 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 Canadians and the Maple Leafs, the Rangers and the Blackhawks, or the Black the Blackhawks and the the Red Wings. Red Wings, yes. Right. I mean, that was really really good stuff. And you played each team maybe 15 times a year. Yeah. So. You know, they it wouldn't have been strange in the NHL to, to play back-to-back -back games against the same team in the same stadium. You know right. what I mean? Right. So, in a way, you know, that's not always a bad thing. And, you know, if they get strong franchises, which obviously the souls of a strong franchise. Right. The ownership um, group is as good as it gets. For sure. I mean, Cleveland seems to be a very strong fr franchise. Tampa Bay. So, you know, if, you know, if they have this and they, and they add two or three teams next year, yeah, they're right back. They're right back sure. in the game. I think. I mean, I think it's just you know, the, you know, you're talking about a secondary sport in this country, and it's a tough, tough spot to be in. Okay, a football crazy city like this, these games are terrific. You know what? Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of people discovering it. I think. And here's the most important right. part. It's a great segue because I think what Scott knows so well, Scott Butera, the AFL commissioner. You know, he has had plenty of experience in turning around uh, models and companies and, and organizations that, you know, weren't as financially stable as, as they could be. And so what I think he's really putting a focus on is the distribution. And we're going to have him on later in the year so he can tell us directly. But, you know, when you focus on the distribution and you have great television partnerships, CBS Sports, ESPN, and the word is getting out there and people are seeing the product because the product speaks for itself. That okay. is how you can start to bring in owners and say, look at this model. We have great television contracts that will be worth more and more as more people come to these games. So the basic framework and structure is there, and now it's just about building. So, you know, I think they have the right guy in charge, and Scott Butera has always been very nice uh, with us and, and generous with his time. And, you know, is, is a great guy to be at the forefront, not exactly a sports-first guy, but a guy that understands the business of running a large corporation well, that's obviously organization. The pro that's obviously the issue here. We have Jaworski. You have football guys all over this league, you know, all over this team for that matter, you know, all-time all football guys. But you need the business end of it, okay? And remember, this is a league that's been around 30 years or so. It's not a league that's been around 
three minutes, okay? Right. It has staying power. It has its ups and it has its downs. And it's still there. And there's something a lot to be said about yep. that. Without so come on down and watch the soul play and enjoy a wonderful family atmosphere. Some really, really good football. Absolutely. You know? The beginning of the national anthem behind us. So we'll be exiting here quite shortly. Eric, I know you wanted to give a thought on your player of the game prediction. I'm going with Ryan, okay? I'm going to go with McDaniel. I think he had five touchdowns against That's this right. team last time. Yep. So let's go for six. Although I do have a dark, <laughs> I, do, I do have a dark sheep, the running back. The must Mikel is definitely my dark sheep. Unfortunately, running backs are not usually the stars of these games. But he would be my dark worst pick for the game. There you star go. of the game. Maybe like a three or four touchdown game. Really, really put the league on the tier from the backfield position. <laughs> you know? Eric, thanks for coming on. It's Tell been a real what? pleasure. It's a lot of fun. We're gonna have you on back next week as well. So huh? we can't wait to can't wait to have you on. This is Bob Long and Eric Nash, and we'll be now, uh, turning our attention to the game, hope you do as well. CBS Sports Network on television and 97.5 The Fanatic locally on Philadelphia Radio. See you next week as the Soul returns home once again to take on the Cleveland Gladiators. And this is the official Soul pregame show live on BLS.